Apologies. Hello, everyone. I'm going to bring Andrew on in just a moment. Uh, with this game, if I'm not actively clicked on it, the sound goes out, which is a little odd, but I'm going to be clicking on it for the most part. It's a mouse-based game. So, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm having a better day. I've had some rough days recently. Um, but yeah, let's bring Andrew in now. Join. Whoops. You can see Discord. Let me fix that. There we go. Oh, te Hi. minor technical difficulty, but nothing too bad. Hello, Andrew. Hi. Ah. You having a good evening? I'm doing all right. I got some little Caesars. I got uh, a Hawaiian print shirt because uh, the other two, I, I need to probably head to a laundromat. I got in contact with a plumber and they said they're coming tomorrow because oh, they said today or tomorrow. And it's honestly, it's probably just like a clog that's too deep for us to deal with. Um, so it's probably not going to be that big a deal, but gotta last get time it. I had a, last time I had a clock like that, I had to go to a colonoscopist. You already had to go to that colonoscopist for another thing. Quit, mm -hmm. quit changing the facts. Uh, I'm going to start over because I'm only seven minutes into this game, I guess. No, it was a prescriptionist last time. Oh, right. Uh, Did we tell that story on stream? Uh, no, I don't think you have. If you wanna, if you wanna gross out my audience right at the beginning here. Uh, no, we'll save that yeah. one for later. All right. So an interesting thing, you'll actually probably want to listen to this one, Andrew, because the soundtrack to this game is done by Steam Power Giraffe, and uh, oh. Bunny Bunny Bennett does. I'm pretty sure it's Bunny Bennett. It might be David. Um. But uh, one of them does the narration. Uh, do you know how old the game is? Ooh, it was from a few years back. Um, they're pr I mean, they were like pretty like helpful on the audio side in general. Uh, they they actually appear at one point in the game. Like the their characters are right in there. Since it's a right, steampunk it, game. Let's give it about a 15 second, or, you know, a little bit of time of silence, and I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'm not hearing any of the narration, so. Yeah, it was a little like newsreel style thing. It might pop up again. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure. I just can't tell because uh, whichever one it is, they're putting on a voice. So it's like having to, I'm not too bad at it. Like I've done enough training with voice acting that I can recognize most voices through character voices, but I don't think I've listened to them speaking often enough to really discern which is which. Uh, uh, depending on when the game was made, Bunny could definitely pull off I know, both voices. Um, mm -hmm. But lately, she said that she can't get as deep a register as she could as doing the spines voice. Mm. Yeah, that used to be a thing: is that she would do, like to razzle him, she would do spines voice live, and like freak out the other robots. Yeah. I don't know how many uh, of the like live performances have you watched? A couple. Okay. Some official, some not. I yeah, it's not always a thing. Are you part of the engineer tier program? No. No. Have you, like, have you checked it out? I can't afford anything like that. Ooh. Okay. Like, I, I'm, I'm super broke. Fair enough. <coughs> yeah, like, that my one, birthday present was... depending on how they do it, and I mean, maybe not necessarily now, but when I used to be a part of it, the idea was that it is basically like Patreon before Patreon, where they, um, where they, like, went and they made it so that you could just donate directly. And basically you donate $20, but you decide how far that $20 goes across. So it can be $20 for one month or $20 for 10 months. So they charge you the 20 right then, but you're in the program for 10 months. Okay. So it's pretty affordable, but you know, wait until you have a little saved, obviously. Don't, don't go into debt over it. So I have a water like a half empty bottle of water that I've been using for my ashtray when I smoke. Mm -hmm. And like, it's been a couple months now. Uh, it's starting to get thick. Like it's starting to not 
four anymore when I tilt it side to side. Uh, I should uh, toss this and get a fresh one, don't you think? Probably, yeah. Get like an actual ashtray, maybe. No. Uh, no. No, no, no. I do. I use this for smell purposes. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't want an ashtray that sits out smelling specifically just because this isn't my house so I spoke with two fans on and a window open with both that's, fans pointing out the window that's so. polite that's ju that's just polite yeah what's the what's the fucking thing from the Lonely Island song it's like them trying to like be hard and then one of them I got a friend named Reggie who lives down at the dump and every other week I bring him some lunch yo that's just fucking nice dude <coughs> never heard i don't like uh snl in general fair enough uh, yeah and you don't like andy samberg right i can't stand berg him mm, yeah fair, fine fine <coughs> um i <coughs> i like this their stuff it's it definitely like toes the line pretty often uh, oh fuck that guy's on my team i wasn't paying attention to <sighs> Okay, this game is kind of strategy, but also kind of like a gunslinging, sort of western-style steampunk. Like something you'd see at Wild Wild West Con. Yeah. Is uh, Rebecca Smart playing in it? Um, they did, I think, shoot the Rex Marksley video at Wild Wild West Con? <coughs> yeah, they did. Okay. They also shot right. uh, another one with Professor Elemental, which they collab pretty often, both being in the steampunk um, community. When, Whenever Bunny puts up the episode of Movie Mausoleum she did last Thursday, mm -hmm. you, you should check that one out. It had the voice actor who played Krillin. Oh, yeah. It's been so long since I watched DBZ, and I'm honestly not as much a fan of DBZ as I am Dragon Ball. Like, the, the It's original. the same voice actor. It's the same voice actor. Fair, fair. Um, but he also did other stuff. Well, yeah. And, you gotta as a voice actor, like... Well, that's just it. He, wa he didn't want to be a voice actor. Really? He wanted to be... He, I think he wanted to do comics. And he just did voice acting to pay the bills one time, and they loved him. That's what happened with John DiMaggio. He um he was living in L.A. Uh, he had been in like a stand-up comedy duo that went its separate ways, like a lot of those duos do. And yeah. um, it was uh Johnny and the Red Man or Johnny and the Little Man, Johnny and the No, I think billy and the red man something like that they like had like a, a really short-lived sketch comedy show on a uh, mtv back in like the 90s but um <coughs> yeah he just he was living out there and he asked his roommate who was also an actor like what do you do to make ends meet and he's like i do commercial narration like it's it's really quick it pays well it's a, a union gig and like they're always looking for somebody if you can just like take a class and so he just moved on from there. And because he had all that live stand-up experience, it really helped him um, in, like, improvising and everything he needed to do to uh, be a voice actor. You know what kind of bothers me? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of things, but what specifically? <laughs> uh, when people think they have a compliment for you, but it's something that could be possibly, like emotionally scarring triggering or like whatever oh but yeah like like there's one that you know kind of bothers me to read uh specifically not just because it's that weird kind of gross compliment that's not really a compliment but also i don't believe it about myself and so it's okay. just really kind of annoying to be like told yeah yeah you are right and, uh it's you are someone's reason to masturbate <laughs> and I've been told that I am in fact that but I don't really I can't imagine somebody like laying in bed like Andrew like I can't <laughs> you know what I mean so like I'm told, I'm told by a lot of people I was which is 
wild to me. Uh, I don't. Former. I don't often like think of an, another actual person. If I'm in a more intimate moment, um, like that, a personal intimate moment, I just I don't know. It it, it feels um. It feels weird to think of an actual person because it's like th that's not. That it, that may not be how they would even act, and Damn. I feel like it's it, it feels like a weird like breach of privacy that they'll never know about. Yeah, I could see that. Like I'm not I'm not judging anybody. I'm saying like that's just how it feels to me. If if that's yeah, yeah. what you gotta do, then like yeah, do 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 your dirty business. Unless it's a situation where like they sent you nudes or something, then it's okay. Like if it's yeah, a... that is that is. Like, Most likely consent got... cons if they gave them freely. Yeah. Oh, or if you know you have consent because of something like that. Like, sure. You know what I mean. So. Oh, I should have that's one thing. up. No one's talking. Yeah, I'm probably not. But I also like to monitor how many viewers we have. Just me. Listen. <laughs> I'm being honest. But like, I mean, I've had people. Like, my whole adult life tell me that. Mm -hmm. Oh, back when we were in high school, I had a huge crush on you. I used to do that every night. Like, really? No. I've had people in my adult life, like, oh, yeah, I did that. Like, so I know it happens. I just, I can't believe that it happens, because it's like, you got the internet out there, and you're thinking about me, like, you could literally just Google attractive guy and find pages better than me. And you're thinking about me. I find that so weird. Ah, uh, yes. That's I, really... I love the porn that is titled Attractive Guy. <laughs> well, I was just saying, like, Google, basic Google image searches, not even porn searches. Oh, okay. Uh, I gotta stretch my legs out. I, I googled attractive uh, Twitch streamer and you came up first page. <laughs> he's, a, <laughs> he's a jerk. It's funny because he's true. He's a race. <laughs> God, what a, what a fantastic character. Can I open this? Oh Reminds yeah. Me, uh, oh yeah, treasure. Reminds me of Rowan Atkinson's character in a uh, rat race. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Oh, uh, okay, cool. That's what I was doing too. <laughs> gotcha. Yours, you give him more of like a, more of like a Mexican flair, like more of a Mexican accent, oh, I, was, I should say. I was going for like Eastern European. Like there, there are interesting like overlaps. I mean, like <laughs> Spanish was um originated in Europe so like there is some cross pollination yeah, but, among the languages. Yeah, but I'm talking about that like that the like vaguely Russian like you're not sure where he could be from like a border country with like Turkey like just that weird like you're not quite sure what his accent is, but you know he likes to wear a Scorpio medallion on his unbuttoned shirt with mm. his hairy chest that he has oiled. That guy. That's who I'm going for here. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that fits. And you're like, oh, in the, in, I know what you're thinking. Enrico is the girl's name. No pun intended. <laughs> Oh no! Still my guy. favorite. He had the best lines in the whole fucking movie. Oh, absolutely. You know what we got back there? You already told me. Ass. We are holding ass. It's <laughs> good stuff. It's the best fucking line. I am weaning. I am weaning. <laughs> I mean, he was too. That's the best part. It's like he was the first one who was. Like realize like, oh we're going, well, let's go. It makes me think, <laughs> to a lesser extent, like um, it feels kind of like uh, they made Total Drama Island. I don't know if you you're aware of this series. 
I saw parts of it early, early on, and then just like immediately didn't like the oh, yeah. style. Well, you're not. I mean, that's sort of the thing is that it because it's an animated reality show, they're kind of specifically written to be the douchiest people on like reality TV. Well, and I didn't like as a fat guy. I really hate when fat characters are drawn super fucking fat compared to everybody else. Yeah, but at the same time, like Owen, who's the fat guy in that that season, is like um. He's he's still considered like spry and stuff. They don't like he eats a lot, and like yeah, there's some fart humor because it's a kid show, but like for the most part, like is it, there aren't like a ton of jabs at him for being fat. And he's the type of guy who even if you called him fat, you'd be like so. Yeah, but my that's still telling me that this is how we see fat people when we yeah. just see Yeah. No, no, it's still it's still definitely now. it's still definitely problematic and stigmatizing, yeah. but like um I don't know. I I I find my enjoyment from it is much in the same way that people enjoy Jersey Shore, which is that like the characters are recognizable and if not necessarily all good people there is still like entertainment to be had at seeing all of these interactions between these very varying personalities. Yeah. Um, and, and in the same way, it's like uh, similarly to Rat Race, it, it's it's the same kind of thing of just like all these wacky characters going and adventuring. I that's guess. just that's reality shows in general. Like honestly, Rat Race, if you think about it is what we would consider a reality show, but it's only being shown to one group of rich businessmen. Um, did you see John Cleese, like, on Twitter today? No, what did he do? Uh, somebody was talking about how their dog was named uh, Kyvine, but it's spelled in Irish, C O A H I M. Hmm. Or something like that. Sure. And John Cleese tweeted, No wonder the Irish never had an empire. Jeez. How fucking shitty of you, dude. That is so fu. Why'd you gotta roast them that fucking hard? But this well, was, that's just this it. This was like, like friendly ribbing, not a goddamn barbecue but like the thing is it's as i'm gonna quote Lindsay ellis on it uh while we're here this is another reason why it's super gross for cleese to go after irish language the only reason it isn't is extinct is because colonizers from england didn't as rigorously police the far north and west as they did central and east same with welsh a lot of people's cultures and histories are tied up in their language. Languages can be tricky, but they mean uh, uh, they can mean a lot to people and help foster communities, which is why a lot of groups try to eradicate others uncomfortable or unfortunately targeting their language too. Yeah. Uh, and Liz Ellis went on to say, Irish language spelling is actually way easier to understand than English once you learn the rules, which are not really that complicated. But I guess boasting of your own ignorance as evidence of your own non-existent superiority is cool too. Yeah. Oh, listen. If you listen, and I mean it'll be a in a minute here. Uh, there's vocals in this part of the soundtrack because I believe this is the bar where Steam Power Giraffe play in the game. Okay. Let me see if I can find them in here. This is it's kind of RPG elements, so. I gotta talk to everybody in the bar. Hmm. But yeah, no, that's that's very true. And I mean, it's it's shocking to see that like the repercussions of even like um, white on white conquest has left such a, a deep mark on all of history. But as Lindsay Ellis con constantly says. Uh, she, what is it she says? The history of colonization 
has left a thumbprint on every culture in all of the earth or something. Yeah, something to that effect. Oh, and the dog's name... The dog was named Kiva. We would spell that K-E-E-V-A. Right. But in Irish, it's spelled C-A-O-I-M-H-E. Hmm. And so, yeah, it's just one of those things where Lindsay Ellis apparently actually studied Irish m studies as her minor. Oh yeah, she mentions that in um, she mentions that in one of her video, one of her videos where she's talking about cultural appropriation. She points out she's wearing a clotter ring, which is an Irish thing, and because she is not Irish, that is a form of cultural appropriation. Um, and she mentions there that yeah, she studied Irish culture in college. Which is an odd huh. minor for a film school to offer. At least, I'm pretty sure she only went to film school, by my understanding. Well, it said it was her undergrad, so it might not mm. have been film school yet. Right. Undergrad, grad school, all that. It's confusing. College is a nightmare. Designed um, to be capitalist wet dreams. My girlfriend got a master's degree in video game design. Kudos. I can't. She, I can't imagine untangling college. Like it's there's so much nonsense with like the whole system. All right, so here it is. You take a four-year degree, yeah. Yeah. If that's that would be undergrad. Yeah. So your bachelor's, your fine arts, your bachelor's of fine arts, which is what I've got. That's a four-year plan. That's undergrad. Kind of like the middle school of college. And then there's right. grad school, which is where you get, like, your master's and, uh, yeah, your master's degree in something. And then there's doctorates, which is even more years of your life right. in school. So you can think of, like, undergrad as kindergarten through fifth grade grad as middle school and then doctorate as high school so lawyers would mostly be the middle school level but doctors would be the high school level and right. I would be an elementary school graduate basically oof and all of it costs like a middle class so income a year at least yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's awful that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's awful and it's confusing, like, to keep up with, like, should I go to this school? Should I go to that school? Should I go to the one that will teach me the thing I'm passionate about so that I can become better at it and make my own way professionally with it? Or should I do something I don't care about as much, but I know there's money in so that I can go into the business of working for someone else doing that? And the answer for me is I'm just going to self-teach myself and... uh <coughs> to s stumble along as best I can. Are you ready for the most face palm moment of wrestling news? Oh man, there's been so much. What do you got? This is gonna make you just go, are you fucking kidding me? Alright. What is it? You know who Glenn Jacobs, mayor of Knox County is, right? No. You would know him best as Kane from WWE. Oh, wait, where is it a, also a WWE gimmick, or is he, um... No, he is the actual mayor of Knox County, Tennessee. Oh, literally, that's not a gimmick. No, he was voted by the people of Knox County in the really real world to be their mayor. Wow. Got kudos, um, I guess. I hope he's good at it. Well, uh, he voted against a mask mandate. Oh, buddy, come on. Kane voted mm. against masks. Oh, yeah, what was that one thing where you were talking about a mask, <laughs> a mask ban at WrestleMania, uh, WWE, and one over two was like, a, no masks at a wrestling event. Lucha, yeah. The Lucha are going to have a field day with this one. Well, no, but think about it. Kane was famous for wearing masks! Yeah, no, I got, I got it. Just 
fucking put. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is. This is. This is how I know that we're actually in a fucking goddamn horror movie for the past few years that's posing as a sitcom. Yeah. Is the wrestler who's famous for his mask voted against masks to save his people's lives? I don't... I don't see how this could be at all helpful. I just don't. I don't see what where people get this idea that like that's gonna help anything. Because people are stupid. Yes, got him. <laughs> got him. This game is like basically a turn-based cover shooter, but it's mm -hmm. also steampunk is. Fuck. Well, it's it's like cyber steampunk, because there's spacefaring and stuff. Hmm. I'd prefer a, a steam shoot punk fairing space mm. turn shooter. Here's the thing. I've made the realization recently, and I can't be the first one, that we actively just are living in a cyberpunk dystopia. Cause like, yeah, I mean... It, it, we have amazing technology, everything's super advanced, but everybody's fucking poor, and it's just like a life of bullshit. Just like every fucking Blade Runner, Neuromancer, Snow Crash, all that shit. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2047, whatever it was. I the new know. game is 2077, but I'm pretty sure it's like supposed to be later. Oh. I. I. Played a game the other day, I can't remember the name of. That was really. Uh, cyberpunk inspired. Right. And it pissed me off. I gave up on it because I could not figure out what to do at one point. Hmm. And the hmm. only website that had a fucking full walkthrough was One Angry Gamer. Oh no. That guy's a total right wing fuckhead. Yeah, and I was like, I refuse to look like to give him that traffic. It frustrated me recently on the voice acting subreddit. Someone like linked one of his articles that was talking about like, oh, should non-black actors be playing black roles? And like, one of the mods was like, I should take this down, but I'm gonna encourage discourse, be nice. To which I'd say he's a fucking asshole, so I don't know why he deserves it in your brain, but um, but yeah, the only comment was like, uh, fair warning, he's like clearly a right wing idiot, so no thanks. And I was, I chimed in as well, but yeah, it looked like most people disagreed with him. It's really frustrating how many people on the voice acting subreddit are just consistently, they're just like consistently ignoring any kind of context when it comes to that issue. Like so many of them, it's clear they're just trying to protect their job of just like, if if, if black people get are the only ones who get to voice black roles, that means there's less chance for me to voice roles. And it's like, no, mm, bud, there's so many roles for you as a white dude. So many. And if you're honestly worried about your chances doing your fucking racist impression of a black person, because that's always what it is when they do it. It's never respectful, like people say. It's always, like, some gross caricature. And they're always like, why should it matter? It's like, you're... This is the most racist shit I've seen, dude. You should not be saying... Like, talking like this. John DiMaggio used to do that shit. I don't know if he still does. But he'd do, like... Um, he would just do this, like, kind of model thing. The grossest one, it was this show called On the Curb, and it was like two two black actors, uh, Cedric Yarborough, Gary Anthony Williams, and then also Fred Tatashore and John DiMaggio, who were both white guys, and they were all four playing these black characters sitting on a stoop, like, by the curbside. And like, that was the whole premise, and it was just them ranting and improv -ing. And it was funny sometimes, but it was like... Eh, yeah, did not feel good. 
Like, if you're doing a direct impression and you're doing it well. Like, John DiMaggio does a Barry White impression specifically, and it's spot on. And in that case, mm, the line's a little more drawn. But most of the time, like, 80 to 90% of those, when that happens, it sounds pretty racist. I... I, I, first of all, I'd like more people of color to voice their race in general. Like, yeah. full on for that. It'll just be better for it, because they have the I, proper perspective on what that means. I also would like if you had more of them in the writing room as well. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That was a big thing. Uh, Lexi Alexander, who's like a director, she used to be a stunt woman. And um, she she's most known for directing uh, Punisher Warzone. And uh, her whole thing is whenever she teaches classes of, like, kids, the girls almost always volunteer to be actors and the boys all volunteer to be directors for these little, like, short film projects she puts them on. And she's like, no, I really want to encourage more girls to be behind the camera. Like, yeah, it's not glamorous, but it's like, you are also a creative person. Like, you can do this is an, an option for you. You don't have to default to just being an actor. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like, I... two of my favorite shows from, like, the last decade, Steven Universe and, um, and, um, uh, She-Ra, Netflix's She-Ra, were both, like, made by women and, like, way more interesting than, like, yeah, most other not... shows. I've not seen them, but I hear they're good. Oh, um, do you have you read Nimona or Lumberjanes? I feel like I've seen Lumberjanes. Yeah, um, it's the same. It's the artist slash writer of that is uh, the creator of the newest version of She-Ra on Netflix. Oh, you mean uh, Molly Ostertag's wife? Uh, I don't know who they're married to, so I, I'm gonna presume. Uh, let me check on that. But I'm pretty sure it's Molly Ostertag. Hmm. Who you would know as the artist behind Brennan Mulligan's uh, strong female protagonist. Oh yeah, I still need to read that. Uh, is it Noelle Stevenson that you're yes, talking about? Yes, that is who. Yeah, that's Molly okay. Ostertag's wife. Okay, I... Uh... Yeah, I'm not as familiar with Molly Ostertag's work, so I mostly know Noelle for her work on Nimona, which is a great webcomic, and Lumberjanes, which is okay, but the lettering is really difficult to read, so I haven't been able to get very far through it. I feel dumb. I haven't been following Noelle yet. Oh. But I followed Molly because of strong female protagonist, and... Uh, noticed like a lot of people I trust not to be shitty people follow her as well so I was like cool okay. oh shit I can recruit people at this bar <laughs> okay that's that's useful I'm still help Th this useful is... useful help this is this is, uh, this is a tricky game it's complicated this guy what's up bud Hmm. Recruit Sally? Hell yeah. White trash robot lady? I'm down. Wait, no, shit. No, come back! Ah, fuck. I meant to buy some stuff, but I went through too fast and they flew away. All right. All right. No, go up there. Go up to the thing. I need to. I need to go do the thing. Go, go, go on the thing. There it is. Here we go. Gats wares. Do you got a an interesting weapon? Sure you do. Cool. Got this hat. Nice. Back it up. Start. Start the mission. What's up? Uh, Virginia Fox on the House floor. Madam Speaker, I ask for the gentleman or gentleman's words to be taken down. I am not a hypocrite. Max Rose, with all due respect, ma'am, you are. 
Madam Speaker. <laughs> a lot of Republicans seem to have agreed with Rose's underlying point. You shouldn't screw workers out of the prevailing wage. Fox Amendment went down hard. Yeah. I don't know what that is. So. I'm not familiar, but they really, sh yeah, should be doing something. They gave us $1,200 like two months ago, and we're already about to swing into some other nonsense, so... Some more money would be appreciated. <laughs> Somebody went to her uh, Wikipedia page and edited it so it said Virginia Ann Fox, nay Palmer, born July 20, or June 29, 1943, a known hypocrite, and the U.S. representative for North Carolina's 5th Congressional District. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> roasted. Oh my god, so she's a North Carolina congressional representative mm. and it looks like something about her she had an amendment for something right um and 42 republicans her party voted against her oof that is um, real rough so it, it sounds like sounds like she wanted to screw workers out of some kind of money. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, it's I, just infuriating because there's never a good reason for it. Other than it will make the people who pay us in their lobbying donations more money. Like, it's genuinely just hypocrisy. Yeah. I have no idea where the fuck my phone is. Oh, there it is! Oh, shit, there's somebody <laughs> else I can whiz bang down here. I guess. I like to whiz bang people too. Listen, we told you to stop doing that on the carpet. Can't get what? a goddamn rug doctor out here every week. <laughs> what, am I doing? Okay, what am I doing? Right. Oh, careful. 2018, Carolina Panthers, all or nothing. 2020, Carolina Panthers. Nothing. Oof. <laughs> God. I don't even like sports and that got me cracking up. Yeah. We're always hearing about it from Clark because his, like, grandpa is always, like, um... Is always, like, convincing him that he's a fan of such and such team and it's, like, he doesn't even know who this team is. So, I don't know... He, he, oh, and he's very vehement about it. He'll be like, yeah, I'm a fan. And I'm like, okay, what's one player's name? And they're like, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't care if you want to be a fan of something, no matter how casual, but like, don't say you're a fan just because that's what you've been conditioned to think. I do not like football at all. Oh yeah, I'm not a fan. I played football in high school. I was terrible. I was always on the bench. Um, I got cut after the first day in middle school. Damn. After they said they don't cut people. Ooh, that was the thing. That's the only reason I was on the team is because my school was so small that they literally had to take everybody to be able to make a team that was big enough to play. Jesus. We, uh... I was not very, like... I mean, you know Corey, so you know what I was in high school. Yeah. We were... Corey and I were very much the same guy in high school. Uh, with the exception of, like, what we were into, I think. And, mm. uh... Like, very similar. So... Not very school spirity, not very, you know... Slacker, I, for lack of a better word. Yeah, but it wasn't because, like, we were stoners or whatever. To the best of my knowledge, Corey rarely smoked and whatnot. I mean, you don't have to be then. a stoner to be a slacker. A slacker is just a right. state of mind. Yeah, but, like, it also implies a level of ignorance, almost. Whereas we, I suppose I always just treat it as, like... Um, lazy, or if not lazy, like, um, an underachiever, whether intentionally or not. 
Uh, for me, it was more like disinterest because I already like knew fucking half the shit we were learning, and the shit I didn't know, I would never know. So, like, sure. I, namely math. Like, I cannot do math. I can't. If you tell me somebody's income by year, I don't understand what that means. But if you tell me like what they make in a week, I can understand that. Sure. So, uh, I cannot like guess. What about a month? Could you handle a month? Uh, yeah, but only because I would like break it into four. Okay. I mean, that's not even necessarily like math. Like, really, math is just um, working out how numbers work. It's it's just spatial reasoning, in the end. Well, like because like it, it, a, a number as... is effectively a quantity. Right. Keep in mind, I don't know my multiplication tables because math does not make sense to me. It just doesn't. I mean, I don't. It never has. It never will. I don't make. But... I don't know the tables, but I do know the um, like I could work it out. I just need a minute. I can't. I. No, I'd have to get a calculator. I cannot do math. Well, shit. Everybody has a calculator now, so. But oddly enough, I was really good at geometry. With geometry. angles and such. Yeah. Huh. Like, well, that's I could like, do shapes and angles. That's more, like, visual, too. So but here's the thing. It's less abstracted. Here's, a, here's the crazy thing I learned, though. Hmm. Do you know why angles and degrees are measured in base 60 instead of base 10? Why? Also, I never it's... realized that, but that that makes a lot more sense now. I never yeah. thought about it, but like, a base, I, I know the base maths, what would you call that? Basic math, I guess? But um, yeah. like, I know how those work, but like, I didn't ever connect the two until just now. That's why you have, like, instead of something like 100 degrees in a circle, 360. Right. It's because it's measured in base 60 uh, because of an ancient civilization that figured that stuff out before the Greeks and the Romans and whatnot. And I want to say it was like Mesopotamian, but they counted in base 60. And Weird. so... Yeah, and so all their, like, numbering was base 60, and so when they carried over, you know, degrees and angles and, you know, things like that, they just kept the base 60 measurements from the previous civilization. I mean, yeah, if it works, like, what's, what does it really matter? Like, in, in general, like, they don't necessarily have to be specific numbers or even specific, like, specific anything it's just standardized in reality like math everything it's all just representative of yes, a larger but think, idea but think about what that might mean for how i think though hmm. because if i couldn't understand base 10 math because it made no sense but i could suddenly understand base 60 math for some reason and just nail that 100 percent of the time does that not imply that I think of numbers differently than the average person? Yeah, it, do it doesn't sound like you're bad at math. It just sounds like your mind is geared towards a different perspective on math. It does. And if people were able to relate it, the parts of math that you don't quite get, in the way, it, in the context of what you are able to get, you might have a better time with that. It's just so wild to think about. Yeah. It's 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 very interesting. I'm not high, you're high. <laughs> Listen, everybody has those thoughts sometimes. They're just brought out more potently by uh by chemical enhancement. I mean shit, even that, that's like super cyberpunk chemical enhancements and stuff. I've been reading Neuromancer, yeah. so I, I'm I'm keyed into like the cyberpunk mindset lately. I was thinking about uh, a vape pen for getting high, hmm. and like the you know, Got a lot imagine of that, imagine that not being a cyberpunk device, and, like don't call it a vape pen. How would you really write that in like 1984, 
for a 1984 audience. Oh, you'd he be pulled surprised. out his pocket. Um, that's well, no, actually I... something in the foreword for Neuromancer, where um, let's see, the book was written in the mid 80s, and in about like 2003, 2004, uh, for the edition I'm reading, William Gibson wrote a um, he wrote a foreword for it where he explained it's like I thought of so many things in the future and like so many sci-fi writers will do this he says where they they come up with the most wild fantastical idea of like visors built into your skin and like tiny little data spikes that you press into your flesh and stuff but he didn't think of a cell phone because they all have still have to find like pay phones and like landlines in yeah. that book so it's like super super futuristic but still still like the paradigm is not like broken yet yeah and like what gets me but like think about if you were back in 1984 mm -hmm. for, but you knew like about vape pens today and you were to include them in your story i mean the earliest forms of vape pens it? have actually been around mm -hmm. since the 1940s I know, but like, imagine you were writing about getting high with a vape pen. You know you would write it as, he pulled out his pocket-sized electric bong. Something, yeah, they wouldn't. I mean, a vape pen itself sounds very cyberpunk, because it was always like, di like distilling language. So it was always like a synthesis of two different terms. So like, vaporizing pen, shortened to vape pen, like that's a very cyberpunk term. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird and think electric bong would be a lot cooler. I mean, or it's no, it's fun. Maybe that something maybe that could yours be fun. Is more cyberpunk, but mine would be a 1950s B movie or um, pulp, pulp story. Here's like here's like a writing exercise. I would uh -huh. say I'm not gonna say it's like an idea for a full story necessarily. But uh, taking something like that, the retro futuristic thing like steampunk, cyberpunk, uh, diesel punk, any of that, and writing a story the way it would have been made back in like the 70s or something. And so like trying to think in that paradigm of like, okay, what would I think the future is going to be like if I was in the 70s right now? And like just like work that out in your mind. I couldn't do it. Oh, uh, it, it, it would I'm, be difficult. Much... Like, that's what I'm saying is, like, as an exercise, like a workout. Because it, it would be very difficult and probably take some, like, um, it'd take a lot of research to be like, okay, did this technology exist in the 70s yet or no? Because I was shocked. I feel, it feels stupid of me, but, like, I remember watching that 70s show and them talking about batteries. And I'm like, batteries existed as far back as the 70s. But they existed, oh, like, yeah, as far back around. as, like like a hundred years yeah they've been a lot around for a long time but for, so for some reason in my brain i was like batteries feel like such a modern concept that like i can't imagine an old battery i mean there's actually an entire size of battery that fell out of use was it was it a no well yes yeah a did fall out uh, and that's why you still have double and triple a but you have C cells, you have D cells. Where are the B cells? Uh, well, as I when I was a kid, I always thought the 15 volt was a B cell, until like I got old enough to read, and I was like, oh wait, that's not correct. Because back when I was a kid is the time of like the Game Boy Color, when you still had to have physical batteries and you had to switch them out all the time. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. every Christmas, my grandma would get me, like, one of those huge packs of double A's in my stocking. Oh, man. Those were the best. Oh, it was so sick. I I honestly, back in high school, I, like, got my old Game Boy Color. And the thing I noticed is, like, the thing you forget with modern stuff is, like, it was so chunky. Like, it was only about the size of, like, my phone, right? So, like, a, a simple size. But it was, like, like two and a half inches thick it was fat and it just it feels good in the hand you know and then like when i worked at nintendo in the warehouse to be clear um what they would do every year is a the garage sale where they basically take all of their old surplus stuff from the warehouses that has not been sold because if it's less than like a pallet they're probably not gonna be able to sell it out 
especially if it's old enough, and they sell it at a huge discount to the employees. So I got an in 2012, I got an inbox Game Boy Advance SP for $30. Nice. It was good. And the thing I'd forgotten about those is because they weren't backlit, they were frontlit. They were there was like a depth to the screen because it was sunken back and it made it feel like super cinematic. It was really cool. I also miss being able to play GBA games on like DS because they don't have that second slot anymore. Hmm. Do I want this? No. Do I want this? I'm only just now realizing that water is the currency in this game. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, weird. that's a consumable. Uh, I think I already got a set of those. Or th those are probably still useful though, actually. Get one for each of them. Oh, I can store an extra item. Hell yeah. And then what's this one again? Brass knuckles. Yes. So I have two pairs. Cool. Okay. I think I'm get figuring this game out. It's pretty fun. Although I was tempted to play FTL again because that was a really fun stream last night. Oh. oh, 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 the one with the really hard, uh... Yeah, the, the, like, spit, the basically Star Trek simulator, where you have to control your whole crew. Yeah. I found that when I was streaming, the games that got the most viewers were, like, MMOs. Hmm. Like, I guess that makes sense. I would just get so many people tuning in to watch me play a game I've never picked up before. And then, like, I would say, hey, you know, stick around. And then I would stream a different game the next time, and the numbers would drop. Mm. So, like, DCU Online got me a lot of viewers. Um, yeah. Let me think. What else was there? Uh, there was DCU Online. There was a Marvel MMO that was free one month. Um, mm. And so, like, I just tried all those. And they would always get the most viewers. Huh. It, it was weird. Oh. That is a that's cool weapon. That's cool. Um, no, no. Rusty armor. I guess it's better than nothing, but why would I want something rusty? It's never good. I wonder if I can get DCU online on my Wii or Switch. On Switch? That'd be... Yeah. I know is I can that... get it on Wait, PS4. is it on Switch? I don't know. That's why I'm wondering. Oh, right. Yeah, I was just checking earlier. Because the thing is, they've, like, ported a lot of games at this point. Let me oh. Google it. DCU online. Uh... Mm -hmm. One of those set. PlayStation. One of those. Oh, it is on Switch. Holy nice. shit. Iggy, let's play that together. Hell yeah. I wonder if I can port my account over, because... I love anything on the Nintendo Switch. It is my favorite console by far. Because I was always, as a kid, because I always moved around a lot, and my parents were never really that well off to have like a nice TV or um, like really like the the security to have like a console or afford a console, they'd always give me handhelds like the Game Boy, the Nintendo, all of that. And um, so most of my gaming, like I had an N64 and my brothers had like a GameCube and I had like a PS2 at one point, but most of my gaming experience was on old PC, like original Doom kind of stuff, or like um, point and click stuff, CD-ROM stuff, or on handhelds. So like with the Switch, it's everything I've ever wanted because it's the price and the like form factor of a handheld, but you can still use it as a console and it's designed to actually work with like multiplayer and shit. It's, it's so perfect. It's exactly what I would have loved to have had as a kid. Because the thing is, it's a game system that it comes with two controllers. And, like, if you get another controller, you have 
Two more controllers. If me and my siblings had had this when we were kids, we would have been able to play so many games together for way more affordably than like any other console that was out at the time. I have always been a console gamer, so. Yeah. Like I, ha I had my handhelds growing up. I loved those, but I was far more comfortable like on a big screen with a controller. Oh, sure. It is generally, like, way more interesting. But I just... Having the perspective of um, handhelds, it's like... Handheld games were always way more experimental because often they were just console games that had been adapted to work within the paradigm. I keep saying paradigm today. Um, the the form factor and within the limitations of the handheld. So it was still more or less the same game, but it would be radically different in like specific ways so that it could still be kind of kind of the same experience without being too um, too much for the, the thing to handle. And so by the time we got to like the PSP where you could have like PlayStation, like original PlayStation games on something that you could fit in your pocket I guess if you had a really big pocket, at least you're like backpack. And like you could play stuff like Symphony of the Night or like FF7 or whatever on a handheld and it still looked just as good. Like those were the heyday for me. I loved the PSP. I wish it had like done way better. Yeah, I skipped the PSP. I, for I don't me, blame you. There were there were no fucking games for it. There were some. There were some, but I none of them that would really be your taste. Like they're def it was like yeah. cutesy shit like I like. But like yeah. not so much stuff you would have cared about. The ports were good. Like as far as emulation and ports go, the PSP was king, and I think still kind of is as far as portable emulators go. There's also like these other bootleg ones you can get, but they're like finicky and kind of difficult to set up. I haven't I haven't messed around with any of those. Nah. Um it, they're a pain by my understanding. Yeah, I for me computers if I play a computer game, I have to have a controller. Full um, stop. Like, sure. I have to at least have an actual mouse, trackpad, impossible. Cannot do no, it. I, I unless it's just a point and click game like Anna's quest or silence then yeah nothing that has any kind of reaction time no well nothing that requires me to use the keyboard mm. I just I hate it I can't yeah having to have your hands like like that like your one finger like tucked under the other hand to work the trackpad and the other ones working the keyboard just feel you feel like you're t-rex stuff and it's, eh, eh. yeah uncomfort basically. yeah um, so, I'm a console controller gamer, period. Sure. I, I can respect that. The only thing I can't really understand is people who are hardcore Xbox gamers. Because there's, like, there's so little to do on Xbox. And it doesn't have the same, like... It doesn't have as good a library, in my opinion. That's the thing, is that, yeah, most of the games I'd want to play on that... I can get on the PlayStation, and the PlayStation yeah. plays them just as well. And then the, the there's only a couple of exclusives I care about, like Sunset Overdrive, which Coco mostly cares about, and I'm planning on playing, probably on the stream at some point. Um, the Rare stuff, because they own Rare now, so that's the only way for me to get Banjo-Kazooie and stuff. And... Uh, what was it? The Halo. Halo's pretty fun. I, I've played the first Halo with Coco. It's not like something I grew up with, but I had a fun enough time with it. Eh. I, I don't like shooters. Yeah. I mean, so. that's the shooter. It, it has a reputation, at least from my, my understanding, of the shooter that most people got into shooters with. Like, even people who didn't play video games, period. That's the, the game that got them into them. No, I totally understand. Like, I'm just... I'm basically just, like, hedging my bets that I don't piss anybody off by trying to make it sound somewhat positive. But in reality, video games, video games. I played the one that I think is fun at the time. 
And I skip I... constantly. Like, I have so many goddamn games, I'm never gonna finish them all. Uh, yeah, same here, really. How many... Let me check Steam, since I have it open here. How many games do I have? I have... Just the ones that... Uh, 717 games on my Steam. I have probably about that much spread out over multiple sources. Hmm. Well, no, I don't want to block that. Uh, you can go over here, Sally. Oh no. There's something counting down. It's probably not good. It's probably pretty bad. That's an unfortunate thing to do. Uh, do I need to, like, do something here? Should I be nervous? How does this game work? I've been playing it for, like, an hour. I feel like I should have an understanding of what's going on at this point. Huh? Alright, well, I know what's down there, so I'm just gonna pop that open. Get the loot. Get the loot. So, let me ask you this question, Andrew. T ask me this thing, Diggy. If you, um... If you could only keep five games... No, let's not even go five. Let's go three games. And they're the only games, like, in existence. Every other game is blipped out of existence. And this is just like an alternate reality where there are only three video games. And you'll have them all, and you'll be able to play them perfectly. So like even stuff that's like, that has servers that don't exist anymore, like Battleborn, or something like that. Like, you you are guaranteed that you'll get to play it all the time, but you only get three. What three? Shenmue, Yakuza 2, Paper Mario. 64. Yakuza 2? Okay. Yeah. They're all really good, but 2 has, I think, the best just pacing and story. Okay. So, and, like, controls and everything. So. I can understand that. Alright, I gotta get the hell out of here. And there's a lot of surface you can cover without load times. Right. Oh, does is that one of those ones that doesn't have load times? Well, like, if you go into a building, you are just in the building versus right. if you go in the building, you open the door and it loads to the building. Right. I've always seen, like, games try and make that work. Um, it works. Okay. Because it, it's oh, always an interesting concept. Like, uh, I remember... A Tony Hawk American Wasteland tried to do that. Um, I think specifically on the PS2 version, you could get to any of the areas of the game um, without loading, quote unquote. But all of right. the areas between them were like these long, empty subway tunnels for like two minutes, which were effectively just a loading time. Um, so you could do like grinds I'll and you could keep a, a, a combo going, but it was like. It, w it was loading. Let me specify that I mean it was... Um, Kiwami. Yakuza Kiwami 2. Yakuza... Oh! Well, okay, PS4. so explain the, the numbering here, because sometimes it's confusing. Um, so Yakuza 1, or just Yakuza... Now, are you going? are you going in release order, or like chronological i'm gonna go in release order okay because it only affects two of the games there's yakuza yeah and yakuza 2 for the ps2 okay then oh wow it's been around that long i only started hearing oh, yeah. about it like 2015 i think oh no it's been around since like 05 if not earlier it's I always interesting reading, hearing like series like that or like persona which Persona, Fire Emblem, they've been around since, like, the 80s, but, like, they're just, like, totally different, like, beasts than they were at one point. Yeah, so... Uh... Yakuza 1 and 2 were on the PS2. 
Mm -hmm. And then I think 3, 4, and 5 were on PS3. But I think they were also released... Or no, no, so they were uh, for the PS3. Mm -hmm. And then they rebooted and redid the graphics on 1 and 2 and released it, and that's Kiwami. Okay. So I guess it just means remaster or re-release. Hmm. Um, Let me look look up what Kiwami means. It's K-I-W-A-M-I, -I, right? Yeah. Kiwami and so, um, meaning... It means friend. So, okay, sure. Oh, no, wait. That's a company. Hold on. Oh, okay. So this is a company called Ki... Ki Kiwiami, basically. It's spelled the same, but it's supposed to combine. <laughs> it's New Zealand. It's uh, Kiwi, the symbol of New Zealand, and Ami, that means friend in French. And it is a Kiwi bird wearing a beret, I guess? So it's like. Kiwami sponsors many high profile triathletes and triathlon teams around the world. Apparently, it means extreme. Ah, ultimate or extreme, I see. Yeah, that so, was the next thing on it. I just got sidetracked <coughs> because that was a uh, that was a strange thing to just run into. So uh, they. Oh shit! There's then, a spine. The spine's in this uh, bar. They, I want to uh, talk to him. Yeah. They uh, made a prequel as well, which was Zero. Right. Um. Which took place in the 80s, which is really a good one. I I highly recommend you play it in order of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Um, I do recommend playing in that order, because otherwise 0 gets spoiled by 1. Isn't that isn't 0 also, like, really a pain in the ass? No, it's pretty good. What was the one you said, like, you couldn't finish? Uh, um, Judgment. Mm. And where does that take place? It takes place in the in 2017, 2018, something like that. I mean, well, I mean, and, like within the within the oh, list. Oh, it's uh at the end, the very end. Okay. It's the most recent game by the studio as well. Hmm. And the way it starts is it's like in the same world, but has none of the same characters, with the exception of uh two. So they, sh and but they're not like important enough characters to be like, oh, that's you know a major character. It's um. Hmm. Oh, I think you're gonna like this character when it shows up on your your on your end of the stream, Andrew. He's a a strongman robot named Ivansky. And he's talking about how he'll he'll be hired to fight, but only if there's a good reason. He says, to help weaker bots, Ivonsky will fight. But if undertaking only for betterment of self, Ivonsky can just pump instead. Fair enough. Ah, oh, damn it, I don't have enough stars for him. Damn it. Be back for you, Ivonsky. Um... I forgot what I was talking about. It happens to the best of us. Oh, uh, Judgment. Ah, yes. I, I couldn't finish that one. The final fight just pissed me off so bad I just stopped. When I got to the end, gave up, and looked up the ending on YouTube. Yeah. It's not worth going back and playing. Like, it's not <laughs> worth the, the playing for that ending. It's the always stuck. the worst when that happens, you know, like... J just like you get through all the story you feel like you should be like ready to finish it up but then it's just it, you just can't get through the last bit and the ending sucked mm. unfortunate yeah I think that might be the one that Pro ZD is in or that might be might have been Kiwami I know Matt Mercer's in it Ah, uh, yeah. I'm not as familiar with his work, but I have seen him around in the community and stuff, so... 
uh, I've been meaning to listen to Critical Role, which is his like D&D show with a bunch of other voice actor friends, but the thing is they're all voice actors I don't know that well. Um, which isn't to say they're bad or anything. They're just like, by my understanding, mostly like video game and dub voice actors, which is just uh, a region of the voice acting industry that I have not studied as well yet. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly have gone through animation specifically. Like, uh, specifically like LA animation. I haven't found how to turn this on in Yakuza. Hmm. But apparently there's an English track for the game. Oh. And Mark Hamill played uh, Majima, apparently. Ooh. My favorite character. Hmm. Let's see. I want to give you some health stuff for Health Town. And you are probably good. Do we have another gun that you could use? Critical is not from that. Mm. Mm, yep. Yep. Yeah, that looks good. Ah, shit. That was the wrong button. I wish I didn't have to be like so like stretched forward doing this. The problem is that I have one of those desks that has the uh like shelves on the sides. And mm -hmm. it's just slightly too narrow for my chair to slide under the desk so I kind of have to like have it at a weird tilt to get like at least part of it in but then I still have to like kind of kind of reach forward to get the thing that might be why my wrist is so strained on top of everything else can I do it like this will this be more comfortable it still looks goofy on the camera whatever I'm, I'm gaming Time to get into it. Get into the mix! Hmm. Alright. Oh, hey! We're finally up to three viewers. We've been hovering at about two for a while here. Three's pretty solid. I mainly... My goal is just to have... Um, the three average I'd need to get to affiliate. Yeah, that would work. The thing is, I also gotta get, um, I also gotta get 50 followers to be affiliate, and so by that point, I should have no problem maintaining three viewers a stream. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. mainly just to weed out bots or like fake accounts, so that they don't try and like spam it. But, um. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to make money off of this. I've been doing, putting a lot of work in. Most of that money is going to go to improving the stream anyways. <laughs> what you got? Uh, Butcher and a Blade meme. Oh, what is it? Oof. Just I shared it on thing. Twitter. So, Maddie and I ordered our dinner out tonight. Oh, same. Got Little From... Caesars delivered. <laughs> We picked a place called Sabor Latin Street Grill. Ooh. And I had my first elote. Elote. But right now. Oh wait, is that the, corn... is that the corn? Yeah, with the mayonnaise and the seasoning. Yeah, dude. A couple Christmases ago, when I went to my dad's place, they always do like a huge spread of like cheese, crackers, olives, all that shit, for their Christmas Eve party, and they had a elote flavored, um tortilla chips. They were still vegan, but they tasted exactly like you were eating a lote. A lote should be vegan. Um, right, it's margarine. I always think, well, no, it's mayonnaise, right? Yeah. Traditionally, mayonnaise isn't vegan. You can make vegan mayonnaise, though. Well, yeah, you can make, like, a veginaise, but, like, by standard, it isn't. And so, like, I'd... That's the thing, it's similar to um, a few years back, Lay's had a uh, uh, biscuits and gravy potato chip that I loved because they tasted exactly like a pepper gravy and they were just delicious, but they also um, were vegan. They didn't use any meat in them, even though it was like a sausage gravy that they advertised it as. 
You don't need sausage to make pepper gravy. Oh no, it's like the picture on it had sausage. So it tasted like oh, a sausage yeah. gravy. It just like didn't have any kind of meat in it. It's Do you know what to... I was shocked to discover is completely vegan? What? Most cans of hot dog chili. Yeah, I was about to say, like here's the thing, like when there's this specific type of vegan hot dog called Big Frank's, and they're like six fat old hot dogs in a can, and they're pretty good. But the thing is, I remember eating them the first time. I was like, these taste really familiar. And then I eventually worked it out. They taste exactly like the meatballs in SpaghettiOs with meatballs. And yeah. when you look at that can, it's not meat. It's vegetable protein. So it could be vegan, but they put beef fat into it to make it taste like it's actually meat. Which is ridiculous and unnecessary. Yeah. Um. Oh. Hmm. I think Cody and Brandy's little dog passed away. No. Which uh, one? Kobe Jack. Kobe Jack. Oh, I haven't watched enough of um, shot of Brandy to like see all their dogs. Oh, now I'm gonna be sad whenever I'm watching those parts. Hmm. Sweet little pup. Yeah. Hikaru Shido looked great out there tonight, didn't she? Oh, everybody was doing great, but yeah, she was very much a standout. Which, unfortunately, the women's division hasn't, like, stood out on that level very much up to this point in AEW. But I'm glad that they're finally getting there. Like, she she did an amazing job tonight. Yeah, and she looked like a champion. Not to say that uh, Nyla Rose didn't, but she looked like the champion that you want to cheer for versus the heel champion the heel and champion that looked, you're scared of and she, and that she didn't look like if penelope ford had won that belt she would have looked like a woman wearing a belt yeah. like the the title would have worn her whereas sheeta looks like a champion with her title yeah penelope ford um she's got a vibe to her where <laughs> I, I'm shocked that she's not a jobber. Yeah, I can see that. Like, she's good, but she's not got her gimmick just right yet. And yeah. that's what's holding her back. Um, are we gonna rag on Jake Hager in his underwear? Yeah. Uh, let's rag on the outfits in general, or at least roast them. I, I try not to use rag as much because I think it's kind of anti-woman. Although I might just be reading too much into it, I haven't done research. I would assume it's anti-poor, like raggedy clothing. Oh, I always thought, like, rag on someone like you're on the rag, like an anti-menstruation kind of thing. Oh. That's yeah. how I've always interpreted it, and like, it's it, the more I think of it in that way, it just feels grosser in either case. But, um... But yeah, we'll start with Jake Hager, but then we'll take a step back to what fucking MJF came out in the ring <laughs> in. Jake Hager looked like he forgot his gear and had to borrow uh, Wardlow's boxers. Exactly. <laughs> and like, I'm not the only one that thought that. Somebody said, what, Miss Sally didn't like you enough to make you tights? Right? It's just, as something about the stitching, something about the material in the fit just looks like it's just underwear. It doesn't look like it's shorts or like meant to be a public kind of outfit. And this is in a, 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 they're basically wearing briefs, most of these guys. You're seeing the full leg, but something about the way he's wearing it just makes him look so much more exposed. And part of it is yeah. just his kind of, his kind of like, He's got this kind of like stance to him where he always looks kind of uncomfortable, even though he's like full hands behind the back, like, mm, I'm a big man. He always has this kind of vibe to him where he's like, uh, mom, can I put my shirt back on? Yeah. And the knee pads, bro, just invest in some black knee pads. Yeah. Instead of pulling a layer of neoprene over your blue and green ones. What are those from, my man? I know you got better ones. I've seen you wear them. Go get some just black knee pads and stop pulling that thin little bit of 
mouse pad fabric over it. Yeah. So then going back to MJF, he wore effectively the same ring coat from, I believe, Revolution, the one where he fought Cody. Um, whereas that one was dark red and also looked silly as hell. Because it looks like a Vict like Victorian pajamas and just is a terrible cut, terrible like colors. This time around, it was like this bright pastel pink that just does not work with his like, his skin tone at all. I believe the word you're looking for is electric pink. Electric pink. I'll take that. No, that's what it is. Is it electric um, pink? I would have thought hot pink. No, because it has the tones from mm. like shat, like the way it moves. Yeah. Um therefore it is electric. Um also if he's trying to go for like a Ric Flair style robe, the cut is not working. It's like, really not. Every time he wears it, it just it looks I don't know what it would look like if it did fit, but it just looks like it doesn't fit. Yeah, it looks like your mom's nightgown more than it looks like. It honestly, it's like when you see guys in a suit, but the suit is just like the wrong size and they can't afford to get it tailored. So they're just kind of swimming in a jacket. Like it has that feel to it. Yeah, it, it feels like a kid in a trench coat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the kid in dad's shirt for bed. Yeah. Um... And then, like, another minor point, and I know this is part of Matt Hardy's whole thing, is the velvet. And it looks like quality enough velvet, but god, we wearing a, a velvet shirt looks so uncomfortable. Well, it's a throwback to 90s era. No, I Matt get Hardy. that. I, I, I recognize that. It's just... it. I guess it back the then, it was low enough video quality that it wasn't as apparent and so now seeing it in full hd i'm just like i don't I can't imagine what that feels like on your skin speaking well, of which remember, this shirt this i got is like so goddamn comfortable i don't know why i took so long to to get on the the button up the summer button up game mm. i did that in eighth grade and thought i was the coolest motherfucker Oh, same. Like, yeah, I wore the, like, really, like, slick, gross, like, uh, synthetic ones. Um, like, like, with just the bright the red. That you're like, people will think they're silk. <laughs> it feels so bad. Um, I would go for the black ones with the, like, kanji sewn on or, like, the dragons. Yeah. Like, the... Like the Asian dragon stitched down one side. Oof. Oh, I, told... I don't have any money. What am I doing in here? That, or I would go with like Hawaiian print shirts. Yeah. Which this one. And that was my look, man. That and khaki shorts and flip flops. Ooh, the khaki shorts. <laughs> Corey does that. The the khaki like cargo short. Yes. Ooh, that's like the most st gross straight guy chic ever. If I had the buddy, I got the kind with the zip on a uh, lower short. <laughs> like, where you could unzip it at the knee and have shorts. Or zip it back up and have full length pants. Uh, disgusting. <laughs> and I would like get the kind with the like little paracord zipper pulls. And the fucking, uh, oh shit. And I would wear that like with a puka shell necklace. You're no, you're making this up now. I am not. This was my eighth grade you look. You did puka shell, and I topped it all off with like a fucking quarter ounce of fucking hair gel per follicle. A, a, a full on monster, my god. <laughs> oh dear lord. Oh, uh, I want to vomit. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. And we've shared a blunt together. <laughs> Don't make me regret my life. I, 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 I grew up after that. And for the next four years, I wore exclusively t-shirts with dragons on them. Uh, well, there was a point where it was, like, impossible. I remember going to, like, uh, Fred Meyers um, with my... Uh, 
with my like mom and like little brothers and stuff and they like di they like didn't have any they had no like b small boy shirts because they were like seven and uh five at that time and there were no shirts in their size that didn't have a skull on them somewhere in some well, pattern yeah, or was, something but that was about like four years after me sure. like that was like oh six to like oh ten that's the mm -hmm. that's exactly when i was in high school yeah i'm talking oh four oh three <laughs> when it was just the nerdiest kids wearing that shit around. Speaking of 03, um, we were do watching a stream of Venture Brothers uh, that a friend was putting on, and I did not realize that show came out in 2003, and I oh, also yeah. did not realize how much of it was like direct references to like 70s television. Like Dr. Orpheus oh, yeah. is clearly, he's just Dr. Strange. And like in like the second episode, he meets the six million dollar man. Yeah. I, I just I and never got those also, references when I watched it as a kid. So now that there's I, also a Blade reference. There's also, I mean, the Venture Brothers themselves are Johnny Quest references. Oh, totally. And um, and actually, they include Johnny uh, Quest in the show. They're kind of like Johnny Quest point. Hardy Boys. Like, sort of a combination. Yeah, but they actually have Action Johnny later in the series, who oh. is what if Johnny Quest grew up? Oh boy, you, it's really worth watching. Oh sure, it really made me want to watch it more because whenever I watch a show like that that I only ever saw on live TV back in the day, um, my thing that I always realize is, God, I only ever saw like a few episodes from like the first couple seasons. Like I didn't, I was not a comprehensive fan of this, and so now when what? you binge stuff, Has it's like, ever hmm. Has this ever happened to you where you're like, you want to, you got nothing else to watch? This would have been like uh, before streaming because now this would never happen. Um, but like you, you're flipping channels. There's nothing on, and then there's like a show that you're like fifth tier interested in, and yeah. so you're like, I'll check it out. Usually, like, on a Saturday morning when the reruns were really bad, you'd do this. Yeah. And it would be, like, the same episode of the show every time you tuned into it. Yeah. The thing like that always got me, specifically, was not shows, but late-night infomercials. And how it's the same episode every time. Yeah. Oh, or are you going somewhere else with it? I mean, regardless, like, it, it would always be, the, like, the same episode or, like, the same, like, three to five episodes, maybe. But after you'd done it, like, a couple times, you basically had the whole whole run of the show that they'd still air memorized. No, my captain. She's no, it's dead. Oh, it's, oh, captain, my captain, not no, my captain. She's dead! This is no laughing matter! I'm laughing. You would laugh anyways. I know. I like Why? your pain. Why is this you? Why is this the life you've <laughs> chosen? I mean, you could probably blame Cory as much as anything else for my personality at this point. He didn't introduce me to, like, the weirdest shit in high school. Yeah. Like, I have I told this story on stream? Uh, one time, he gave me a mix CD he had put together. He was like, I think you'd really like this. And if you wonder what Corey sounds like, imagine a slightly more nasal Brian Wecht. And you're pretty close. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty... <laughs> like, slightly more nasal, but, like, younger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, without the timber to it, like... And he does have, like, a, a bit more of a Midwestern accent. Eh, but... A bit it's more. Enough, but it's close enough if you're curious. And so, um... Corey was like, I think you'd really enjoy this. <laughs> kind of like Jamie Heineman as well, like... Oh, yeah, bit. yeah. It's, it's that same kind of, like, gruff, 
clearly doesn't like talking more than they need to kind of sound. <laughs> right. But they also can keep a dead pan face when they're fucking with you. Oh, yeah. So, um, he just gives me the CD. He's like, I think you'll really enjoy it. Check it out. So I go home and I'm listening to it and it's got like, uh, I like big butts and I cannot lie. It's sure. got uh, As you outcast, do. outcasts the whole world. Um, and then there's a track of him like halfway through. You're just like grooving. You're like, damn, this is actually a pretty cool mix. Disparate, but cool. And then it's just like Corey <laughs> talking to his mom. Going, mom, I lost the microphone. And where did you lose it? And I don't know, mom. And it's like, mom, I found it. Mom. <laughs> Corey mom, did that? Say, yes. It's like, mom, say taquito. Like, what? Taquito. She's like, what are you saying? Taquito. I gotta say, <laughs> right back into music. I'm <laughs> explanation. I'm incredibly jealous of like how close Corey is with his family, cause uh -huh. like he calls his he, he and his mom call each other like every day. Like, they'll just call wow. each other and not have anything to say and just be like, oh, how was your day? All that. Like, every day or two. It's... Yeah. It, I, I can't imagine, because I don't... I don't know. I, I guess most of my family is kind of antisocial, so we'll talk to each other, but it's usually a text every couple weeks to a month. Yeah. I talk Ooh. to my mom every couple of days, but that's about it. Um... My son messages me when he wants to, so... Yeah. But, uh, uh, just... And then it just cuts right back into music after it's like, <laughs> And the hole where... I'm like... I get to school the next day, I'm like, Corey, what the fuck? He's like, what, you didn't like it? <laughs> <laughs> he, he is very similar to, like... Ninja Brian or Jimmy Heineman and sense of humor. Wait, sure. He, he he can fuck with you like no one else can. And I mean, I could, but you can always like. There's, I have some tells that if you put up with me long enough, you figure out. You fucking got me recently, a couple <laughs> times though. I thought I've known you long enough that I can tell pretty much every time. I'm like. I'm like, I'm just gonna sandbag him. I'm not gonna give him anything. I'm not gonna make him feel proud of this one. But then, like, with the Star Wars arguing, you were getting me genuinely really mad. <laughs> and then there was another one. Fuck, what was the other one? There was another one, like, a few days ago where you, like, fully got me. I don't remember, but that's so good. <laughs> I was so angry. Because the thing is, I'm I'm fr I'm I'm a very passionate person, as right. I feel like people can tell if they watch any of these streams. But like, s when somebody is saying something real fucking ignorant, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm gonna educate this fucker, but then they're not taking to any of it. Ooh, I'm not I'm not letting that one die. I will I will go to my fuck I will put myself in my grave. Directly, <laughs> just to like prove a point. Uh, that's that makes me so happy. <sighs> oh god! Wait, what was that? What's this thing? Scrap. You know how I would get my son's mom? Hmm. I I would tell her jokes as if they really happened. Oh and yeah. And if you tell tell them like they really happened to you then, you know, she would fucking lose her mind when she found out you joked with her because she considers that lying. Oh. And so, yeah, so I came in one time and she was like, is something wrong? I was like, I just heard on the radio that a psychic little person escaped from jail. And she's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. Apparently the call went out small, medium, at large. And then she caught on to, like, the fact I was fucking telling a joke. And she went, you lie so damn much. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, it's a joke. 
Like, and I've told her jokes uh, that were like clearly fucking not true about myself, and thought that she understood that they were jokes because, of course, I have not been like in a courtroom when a skunk walked in. Yeah. Like no, like jokes like that level of you know joke, mostly puns and dad jokes. The one that seems to be your go-to. My go-to is always uh. What do you call an undercover spaghetti? An impasta? An impasta. When I was a kid, uh, my grandmother used to get me this... Like, it was kind of like Reader's Digest for kids. Mm hmm? And I don't remember what it was called. I don't remember what the name of this one comic was called. But it's a comic that they ran in the magazine about these worms and my grandmother would read it to me when I was real little and it cracked her up because one of the worms names was Wilbur Diggs and that's actually her father's name oh <laughs> and so it would just crack her up to see her father's name on this little worm right and it was, I mean, it was mostly like um uh, Oh, it was, I'm Isn't trying to think enough? who it was. No, my inventory is full. Shit, I gotta sell something. Uh, it was mostly like a worm version of Veggie Tales. So, okay. like, it wasn't it wasn't super Christian, but it was like that level of character depth. Right. So. I remember as a kid, I had a series of books. Basically, like, I always was into jokes and humor and stuff because my, um, my birth name, Isaac, it means he who laughs. So, just like, I think that's my earliest memory is my mom explaining that to me. I was like, oh, okay, laughing's definitely going to be important to me then. Um, so people would always buy me joke books and stuff, and I'd always be looking them up. And my, like, dad's girlfriend's sister so would have been my like aunt if they ever had gotten married um got me a bunch of uh, books with Sven and Oli jokes do you know these I may actually know these yeah the one I always I always use in is an example because it's the most innocuous and some of them get kind of raunchy um, oh yeah so, uh, is uh Sven and Oli are going out fishing and they rent a boat and they go out on the water, and just within a few minutes, they're just like scooping up fish. It's the best day of fishing they've ever had in their lives. It's amazing. And Sven starts drawing a big old X on the bottom of the boat. And Oli's like, what are you doing? And he says, I'm marking it so that we know where to find the spot next time we come fishing. And Oli says, you idiot. What if we get a different boat? That's the worst joke I've heard. Ah. That is such a, like... You could tell that whoever wrote that joke spent all their time writing dirty jokes. Sure. And that was their attempt at, like, a normal joke. Well, Sven and Oli jokes are the kind of jokes that, like... The way I've heard it explained is that they're, like, um, jokes that, like, Midwesterners tell each other and like one of the big things is like oh if you're in a polish community then they're usually norwegian and if you're in a norwegian community then they're usually called polish and it's just supposed to be a couple of dunces yeah um that reminds me of a dirty joke oh boy <laughs> uh this guy was kind of you know that level of dumb big guy sweet guy but his friends find out out drinking one night that he's a virgin. He's never had sex. And so they're like, oh, we can't have that. So they took him down to the whorehouse after giving him, like, a little lesson on what to expect. Sure. Like, here's what you're gonna... Here's what you do. Here's what you say. And so they take him down to the whorehouse and pay for the hooker and everything. And they come... <laughs> comes back the next day and they're like well how'd it go how'd it go he's like well she started touching me like you said she would and I took off my clothes like you said I should and I kissed her like you said I should and 
then she started doing something with her mouth like you said she would and put her butt in my face and I did what you said I should and boys it felt amazing and right when I thought I was about to feel that thing you were talking about she farted right up my nose and I was like well, well okay let's keep going I guess and right when I got to that feeling again she farted up my nose again and I said ma'am I'm sure you're nice and everything, but I can't take 67 more of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a, that sounds like if uh, if King of the Hill was R-rated, that sounds like a joke that yeah. went on there. <laughs> that would have been poor Boom or not uh, not Boom Hammer, not Dale, uh, Bill. Bill, yep. I can't take 67 more of those. <laughs> God damn it. It's always fun <laughs> seeing Steven Root in like, cause he, he mostly does on camera stuff. Like he's an office space and a lot of other things. But it's always fun seeing him because it always takes me like a few like shots seeing him in something before I realize who it is. And like, it's oh, always no, such a I wonderful don't. thing of like, Oh, that's Steven Root. This guy's gonna be great. I don't know if I know Steven Root. He's a Bell's voice actor. He was in uh in Office Space, he was um he was Milton. Uh Oh, okay. That's all you need to say. Yeah. Um in Get Out, he was uh the 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 uh the the Ooh, spoiler, I don't wanna spoil that. Um he was the the blind um, artist, or the blind photographer specifically. I don't know, have you seen I it? I think... Out? No, but it's been spoiled. Oh, okay. I mean, it's... It, th that's the thing, too, is that you wouldn't be the only one be getting spoiled, because there's gonna be a, a record of this. And it's a very yeah, good Yeah, but movie. I feel like... I feel like it's been well and totally spoiled by now. <laughs> like, extremely so. I guess I just don't want it for anybody who like has the opportunity to see it without being spoiled. I don't want to ruin it for them. I mean that's fair. I'm just saying like I personally I like I don't care about spoilers. I get spoiled to stuff like all the time, and I'm it, I. The thing I've always heard is that, according to most psycho psychological studies, the more you know about something, even if it is a spoiler, the more you're able to enjoy it and like appreciate it. So that's generally my like attitude towards it is I'd rather know more about the thing and uh, be able to appreciate how the twist works if there is one. I could see that. For me it's more I don't know, I don't dislike spoilers unless it's something I'm really invested in. Yeah, yeah, I understand so, that. Like um I'll be playing a game or watching a show and look up a spoiler for... Like, if I think I figured something out, I will absolutely check spoilers on it. Um... Because there's a few things when I'm watching, I'm like, I bet I know where this is going. I bet I... Because... I like to think, you know, I'm a writer, so I can guess where it's going. And if I think I'm right, or if I've noticed something, like, kind of funky in the storytelling, I'll check spoilers to see if I'm right. Mm. I usually, my thing will be to go to like IMDB and just start looking through like trivia, goofs, whatever, and just kind of like, um, just like absorb more of the movie through that. I could see that. Um, um. There was a thing, folding ideas. Um, he's friends with Lindsay Ellis and like they, they, um, have tried to collab on things, but he's just always too busy because he is a working film professional. Um, but he had a video about uh, decoding metaphor and such, and why uh, and why he understands that videos like Cinema Sins or whatever are popular because, like, if you like a movie or whatever media, like, you're gonna want to ha absorb more of it in whatever way you can. And he relates to that in that he will bring up the plot synopsis on Wikipedia and just read through it again to keep everything fresh while he's talking about it with friends. 
I keep forgetting to do that, but I want to do that more often because I feel like it would it would help my memorization of plot points, which I'm not always very good about. I only pick up things if I uh, marathon it. Sure. Um, I can't do it week to week. Um, I like I completely forgot about MJF's robe at uh, Revolution. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I remember the one time before, and it looked a little better, but it's... Yeah, I, I'm hoping that somebody lets him know that that says it doesn't look so good. Yeah. Um... For me, it's just... I can't... I forget things very, very, very easily. Um, I have terrible memory problems, actually. Mm -hmm. So, the idea of a thing where, you know, I can sit down and watch all of a story at one time is good. I can absorb it better. Right. But if I have to space out my absorption over, you know, a week, I can't remember anything. Like, I, I, if Jeff Jocks mentions a character in uh, questionable content that hasn't been on in the past couple of weeks, I don't remember them. Like, if it's outside the core group, I will not remember who they are. Um, okay. I've had to check the cast before to, like, remember uh, who fucking Sven was. Mm. Because his name was mentioned recently. Like, I'm looking at the cast list on the website right now. I do not remember half these. Holy shit, I forgot there was even a fucking band in this game. For this comic. What God. comic? Uh, questionable content. Questionable content. Wait. I think I know that one. It's, um... Jeff Jock's comic. I... It's really good. It sounds really familiar, but it's also one of those names where it could be, like, a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, um... The main character, it damn, I can't remember his name. All of a sudden, I just saw him. Oh, Martin Reed. He's a. Uh, he had like a robot computer named Pint Size. Yeah, I don't think I remember this one. Oh, it's worth reading. It's really good. Send me if you could send me uh, one a specific strip that you like. I will see if I recognize the art style because it sounds so familiar. Well, that's just it. His art style changed over the years. Mmm. Um. I mean, I'll I, I, I'll probably be able to remember, like, uh, based on like a character design or something. Well, this is the main character in the story, but the guy with the gray T-shirt. But if you remember the work from earlier then it'll look more like this. So you can see his, uh, Jeff's. Oh yeah, I do remember this comic. Which one do you recognize more, the first or the, the second? The second, by far. Yeah, uh, his art style got a lot better. But uh, sure. it's really, really, really it's Not quite good. as ridiculous as least I could do, where it went from like super rudimentary, like, uh, like Sunday cartoon strip to actual like full published comic level. Oh god, here's one of the middle ground eras. Oh, I should have probably done a picture for that one. You fool. Uh, yeah. This is like somewhere in the middle. Hmm. I <laughs> honestly would say I think I prefer that. I mean, I'm only looking at, a, like, a tiny version of it, so it might not, um... It might not look as good if I, I actually opened it up, but it... From my perspective right now, I think the, the middle ground one looks better. Oh my god. Boy, that might have been a fan. Or, mm. yeah, that was somebody else. Never mind. I was gonna say, yeah, it looks it looks pretty drastically different. This is the middle ground. That was, uh, like, somebody had submitted one for him. That's the middle ground art. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it, 
It definitely has that like webcomic look. Oh yeah, this would have been uh, very early. This was 2005. Mm. It started in like 2003. And right. it's still going. It's still going strong. Um, but yeah, I really like his comic. But like if they meant going from 03 to 20, you know, there are a lot of characters in that. And I don't always remember them. You know, I can't uh, remember all these people. I or there was another that. comic. There's a lot of comics that are like that. Um, the longer they run, the worse it gets. Like, least I could do has characters I've completely forgotten. Oh, sure. And then they'll do the thing where, like, they'll have an arc, and then, like, years later, they'll come back in an arc, and it's like, oh my god, it's that guy! And it's like, uh, who? though especially when they've changed like art style and the guy looks completely unrecognizable and then you have to wait till the set they always wait until the second entry into that new arc to like explain who they are so you could go a week of just like who the f who is that guy what Should you know which him? one you know which one bothered or like got to a point where i couldn't stand reading it anymore which one? Something positive. I because... That's the one I was thinking of. When you were saying the name of this one, I was thinking of something positive. And yeah, I had the same thing where they bring back... Yeah, no, Characters. I read... Characters. I read a ton of something positive. Um, I got as far as when he was, like, basically the godfather to some kid. And he was, like, do, DMing uh, Dungeons & Dragons for him. Um, like, I think was... that might be. I I think I read a little further than that, but yeah, that it was around about... that time that I just gave up. I was like, I'm, I'm done, because I can understand that. Like they would introduce a new character, and you'd be like, oh, a new character, and then you realize, no, this character was from like three years ago. Yeah, like... he never. They always come back in some way, even like uh, cameos. Like there's so many cameos in that that series where like yeah. it's it sometimes that's the thing is like it got to a point where like there was never a character in it who wasn't in some way had appeared at some point before like there weren't extras of any kind right and there's a comic I'm reading now called go get a roomie which is really good yeah which I thought but... ended I guess I must have like come into it on a hiatus because but I, I found it sometime in like 2015 and read up to where it was and then i saw that they hadn't posted in like half a year and i was like oh okay it's just over no it's still going okay i'll, uh, I'll right, have to go right back to it i liked that one a lot um but they'll do that they did that recently where they brought back a character that had been on just a couple of weeks ago and i forgot the person was in the comic wow and like it, it was a ch character that the story is one I should have remembered mm. but I just recently uh, yesterday started a new webcomic and finished all that they've got so far oh wow that fresh uh yeah I guess they only update on Wednesdays but mm. they post like each update is like a couple pages right like like two to three times what a normal post would be on a, any other webcomic. Sure. And it's called Back. Back. Oh yeah, you were mentioning that on a past podcast. What's the plot? I can't say or not too plot, much. At least premise. Uh, there's a woman brought back to life by what appear to be witches. Uh, uh and she's told that her purpose is to end the world. Mmm, right. I do remember so you mentioning is, this one. And so her, you know, mission statement is to go north, kill the king, end the world. And that's all I can really tell you, but I can tell you this. It has, um, the artist behind Ned Droid on it, and... I will tell you now, they are amazing in this. 
uh, like you don't think of Ned Droid as being too like art heavy, but this is, and it's so good. Mm. And the writer did another web comic. I'm not as familiar with their work, um, so I have to find it. Uh, do, do, do. Also, I have a cilantro rant for later. Cilantro um, rant. Oh boy, yeah. knowing knowing the infamy of that specific uh, herb. Herb? Yeah. Uh, KC Green is the writer. Um, oh, oh yeah, KC Green. I mean, KC Green is one of those folks like uh, Neil Cicerega who's just like so keyed in to what the internet is gonna like. Like they just know how to make perfect internet content. Oh, I actually just checked out his website. Now I need to see the rest of these comics because these look great. But Back is one that he writes, or I assume is a he. This may not be a he. Casey Green. Um, yeah. I I'm pretty sure he. Um, yeah. I don't know how familiar are you exactly. with with their work. I no back and that's it okay casey green you would probably know as the guy who made the comic the this is fine dog where he's in like the burning house oh yeah, yeah. and also dick butt oh okay um which is yeah. so, it's god i can't imagine what that must what people who don't know what dick butt is might must think when they hear that phrase <laughs> but yeah so casey green wrote it and Ned Droid uh, drew it. It's okay. really good. It has like smacks of late 90s, uh, early aughts kind of indie comic to it. Oh, a sure. little. Imagine like if they made Over the Garden Wall as a 90s indie comic Ooh. by like Evan Dorkin or. Uh, it's also got like a real Oz feel to it, like Return to Oz. It's oh, got that okay. Kind of... Oh, it is so good. All right. Also, uh, cilantro now. Uh, fuck yeah. cilantro. Uh, yes, I've heard you say this on Twitter a few times. Let the stream audience know your grievances. So, I am actually a literal mutant. I am not like the average person because I am mutated. I have receptors in my tongue, which when they taste cilantro, do not taste whatever divine herb you normies taste, but instead tastes dish soap. Here's the thing, I don't taste soap, but I also do not care for cilantro because it's just not a pleasant taste to me. Like if it's like within something, like a salsa or like uh, nope, like nope, something, nope. like I can handle that. But like anytime I've tried cilantro on its own, it's like no, it's the, it's it's the spicy leaf. No, um, for m people like me, salsa will taste like soap. Your yeah. taco will taste like soap. Similarly, and I don't know if it's also a mutation, but um, I I have fucked up uh, sour receptors. Where, like, I've never understood why people find vinegar so vile, because to me it tastes uh, effectively sweet. Like, even just, like, even, like, any vinegar based thing or anything that's described as vinegary, it's like that just tastes sweet to me. Um, that probably is a mutation as well. Yeah, and I'm not, I've, um, I've definitely run into other people who also have that, so. I feel like, yeah, it, it probably is something similar to the cilantro um, thing. But, um, like, th there's so many, like, things in this comic that you'll look at and you'll be like, I know what this inspiration is, and the way they blend it with this is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's just so good. It's so, so good. And it's still going, so it's not finished. And that makes me so happy. Um... Shit. More turrets. So like, I think I can get one of these guys in. Back is one of the best comics I've ever read so far. 
Like really? I am gonna that good. I, I'm not talking. I'm not talking best web comics. I'm talking. It is one of the best comics I've ever read. Holy shit. Yeah. Like if they ever do a full like omnibus print edition when it's done, I will buy it. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And it does seem like the kind of comic that has a definite end. Um, yeah, I always appreciate when there's an actual like goal in mind and not just the idea of um, of just infinite perpetual serialization. I I don't mind it because I mean it's nothing new to comics. I'm going um, to uh, read this real quick. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to read the something positive comic that you sent. Oh, I just picked a random one. Mm, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm curious what's even happened within the... Like, there is there is a point where I am, like, curious about what happened to those characters later. Because, if anything, um, he made them feel like they were real enough people you know my problem with it was i always had a sense of dread reading it oh sure like he, yeah it was definitely very like, morose like you always felt like everyone in the comic was just one bad day away from having their entire lives ruined yeah and i mean that's kind always, of relatable though yeah but it was like to unrealistic degrees sometimes, like... I don't know, maybe I'm just... Oh, misremembering, but it just seemed like... Everyone in this entire comic was barely surviving, and yet... Yeah, we're supposed to still laugh and have fun, and like, god damn, just give them one good day. Yeah. Fuck, just one. And there was, you know, it got to a point where I just felt like, I get it. You're cynical, you're angry, and you don't trust anything. Oh, sure. What do you, I mean, I was, was in that, was that headspace problem. when I read it the, uh, regularly. So, like, I yeah. for sure, like, did it. But then, at a certain point, I kind of grew up and, like, recognized, like, it's kind of an immature mindset to have. Like, shit is gonna suck. Here's the thing, no matter what, shit is probably gonna suck. We live in a messed up world, and I'm at the point where it's like, I can either accept that and try and make the best of it, or I can just wallow in it the way that I used to. And I'm just at the point where it's like, I don't, I don't have the fucking energy to let it get to me anymore. I just, I'm just like, shit sucks, that's how it is. Just move, moving on. If not necessarily positive, at least, like, just tr getting through stuff. And just recognizing, like, yeah, this situation sucks, but there's just stuff you gotta do. You know? Yeah. Um, I, for me, it was just... I can't invest in characters who only know, like, awfulness. You know, like... Even when, because that's just depression porn at that point. Oh, like, even yeah. people who are depressed have days where things go right and they're happy. You know, this, and maybe it's his art style, maybe it's just his writing, but none of the characters ever looked legitimately happy to be anywhere or be doing anything. Oh, yeah, they were all incredibly cynical. And, like, None of them ever looked happy. And yeah. even when they were with friends or, you know, whatever. The, and maybe it's just the way he draws eyes, but they all looked incredibly tired and like they'd rather just die and get it over. I'm like, I don't... I, I don't enjoy that. Like, why the fuck would I want to read I that? I can understand that. Like, for me, it's just like... It's this feeling of more like yeah I've lived through the same stuff and like I recognize how much it sucks but like it's nice to see that I'm not alone in that similar to why people loved clerks when it came out because it was it was a, 
a love letter, or if not a love letter, like at least um, a, a recog... Uh, what would you call it? Just an example of you're not the only person who is the way you are. You're not the only person who's working a crappy job in your 20s, just making ends meet, trying to like make the best of your time, obsessed with pop culture, adding way more credence to just getting some amount of entertainment into your day to day like to me when I was in that place it was nice to see that I wasn't the only one and that there was some amount of solidarity to it but I can totally understand your perspective of that being way too depressing because yeah now when I look back on it, it's like it's just so cynical and so depressing and that's actually one thing I really love about Mr. Robot I don't know if you've watched that show I but, tried. Well, that's the thing, is that it begins with a lot of that same immaturity and cynicism towards the world, but later on, after things have, like, like, gone way beyond what they started at, Elliot, the main character, realizes his immaturity and, like, tries to reverse everything he's been doing as this just punk rebel against the, the, the man, as they put it in this. But then... Oh, it goes places. So even if, like, that's not necessarily something you like, by the time it ends, everything meshes together so well. I think that's probably my favorite show, period, was Mr. Robot. It, it just worked so well in what it was trying to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I just couldn't get past, like, the first episode, even. Like, I couldn't even finish it. Really? Like, what was, what was, uh, what did you, what was, like, turning you off about it? I don't even remember because it was so long ago that I watched it. But, like, something about somebody staying the night either at his house or him staying the night at someone else's house and, like, how, oh, that sets, that changes things. I was like, oh, just shut up. We get it. Like, I, I, I'm sick and tired of, like, Hollywood's version of what, like, they think that kind of person's like, because it's never right. Hmm. Interesting, because, like, I felt, I related very heavily to, like, um, the sort of paranoid, uh, psychoses that Elliot I never had. got a paranoid psychoses. I got... No, I did not get even close to paranoid psychoses. I, I made it like ten minutes in. I was just like, uh, nope, I'm done. Hmm. Also, how you feel about um them not addressing anything about fucking Justin Roberts? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna fall back for now on your point of they probably investigated everybody that there's been allegations against and at least presume that there's not a need for it that's my my best hope but yeah I don't know it, it's concerning yeah I'm not comfortable with him not saying anything yeah at like, least like at least... To explain why he's still there yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, because I've not seen the allegations since that one Twitter account was taken down. So I'm guessing maybe either like I've only seen people, uh, you know, asking about them. And like when I Google it, or when I search it on Twitter, all I can find are people asking about them. Hmm. So I can't find like the specific accuser, so maybe they took him down. Yeah, maybe... and the thing is, is that is that because because they weren't founded, or is that because they were being harassed and decided to take them down? Like without knowing why they're not there anymore, it's yeah, I, it's hard to gauge um, how to feel about that. Oh, here's something interesting. Hmm. Uh, because of Moxley being pushed to fight or fight for Fallen, 
Right? Uh, they've replaced that match. Kenny Omega and Hangman Page versus Private Party. Oh, so the Tag Team Championship is just happening. Yeah, next week. Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's smart. Like, if you you gotta do something to make up for it, and that's that's it'll be difficult, but it's quick thinking at least. Jericho versus Cassidy next week. Archer oh, versus. Oh yeah. Jericho. Oh my God, Jericho versus Cassidy is gonna be amazing. Lance Archer versus Joey Janela. That'll be okay. Uh, Nyla Rose versus to be announced. What? Wait. It says she's in action, which usually means she has a match. If it says in action, that means that they're going to fight a jobber and win within, like, two minutes. Yeah, and she has a major announcement to make, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, that's ba uh, basically all it ends up being is just, like, they go out, completely demolish a jobber, and then have, like, a, an in-ring promo. Yeah, I mean, usually, yeah, so that's what I assume this will be. Then we've got... Colt Cabana versus Brody Lee, or Colt Cabana, Brody Lee, and Stu Grayson versus SoCal Uncensored. Oh yeah, Colt Cabana's been like tag teaming with them. Not official yet, but what do you think? Mm -hmm. What do you think they'll make his Dark Order name? I don't know. I I don't know. I have no clue. Maybe I'm... just keep him as Colt. Yeah. I don't, because like they gave one to to Preston, making him yeah, but... um So I feel like there's a, some opportunity to come up with something clever with that. Hmm. I uh, I don't have it. But then comes what will probably be match of the night: FTR and the Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers and the Butcher and the Blade. Oh my God! An eight-man tag. It's gonna be madness. And then Kenny Omega and Hangman Page versus Private Party. Hmm, right. And I don't blame them for pushing to Fighter Fest. I don't think they should have done Fighter Fest the next week. Hmm. Or Fight for the Fallen. I'm sorry. I don't blame them pushing Mox to Fight for the Fallen. I just don't think it should have been next, the like, week after. So they Wait, are doing Fight on. for the Fallen? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, yeah, I'd like that to become a, a regular thing, because like, there's always people in need of. Uh... I don't know. I don't know if this one will be a charity one. Mm, um, so it might just be in name rather than the same, uh, the same particular setup. Right. Um. Because it's a Wednesday show instead of a pay per view. So, yeah, it could be that, uh, they are doing just the name only to make the match feel important. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what other matches, like, doing it so soon after, it's like you can't really give it the same hype as, like, Fighter Fest. Fighter Fest as well, that's a name that I don't think is going to age well, so... While I do enjoy it, um, they may have to adjust that at some point, considering it's a specific yeah. reference. I don't know. I feel like it can become its own thing now. Yeah. Um, the spelling maybe change over time, but yeah, I think. It, but I mean, it's think a little about too particular. Some... The like logo and like branding and stuff is definitely also emulating. Well, I mean, that will change over time and grow, and you know, it'll evolve. I, I'm okay with that. Okay. What I want... Uh, I mean, look at WrestleMania. It's not the same logo every single year. So That's true. Alright, well, with that, I am going to end it for the night here. So, thank you to everybody watching. Thanks to everybody who watched. And thanks to everybody who will watch sometime in the future on the past broadcast tab. Or on the archive channel, which is below on the browser version. Um, I also have a schedule down there, which is a smaller schedule, but I figured out how to set up Twitch's new scheduling thing. So I'm going to be using that tentatively, but as always, schedule is subject to change, so that'll show the general idea. I, I don't 
I don't really care for it having to be set to a specific time, because those are definitely subject to change. The day is usually going to be s solid, but the time may change from time to time. But yeah, thank you. Uh, if you have not followed, please follow. It's free, and it really helps out the channel. I'm trying to get to 50 for affiliate and everything. Uh, check out my personal YouTube, where I've done some movie reviews recently, and I'll be doing some other stuff soon. I want to ramp up production on stuff on my YouTube channel and start posting there more again. And also check out my Twitter, at IggyDKid. I tweet out when I go live. So if you don't want to check the schedule, then you can check that. And that'll be accurate. Anything else? Nope. Okay, Andrew, anything last words for tonight tenemos terro miedo mm. good good I do it took me a second I know what that meant <laughs> I have no fear right we have no fear when we it's have tenemos. no fear damn it the con I, I got far enough that I have an okay vocabulary in the basics of Spanish but conjugation is where I get stuck it's, uh, Lucha Brothers. I know. I, I recognize the Zero Merdo. Zero Miedo. The Tiemos. Did not get that. Tenemos. Tenemos, Ten yes. I recognize that have. I recognize the root is have, but I did not know the exact, um, conjugation. Tango is I. Tiene is you. Tienes is they. Uh, Tenemos is us. We. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for the Spanish lesson, and we'll play that out for the night. Good night, everybody. Night. Adios. Nos vemos.